you've seen me use some analog meters. Um, I have a triplet 630 and a Hewlett Packard uh, 427. Uh, both of those meters are great, and analog meters are great when you need them. I also have some small ones. I have uh, this uh, small triplet here. It is a, a 310C. But today, what I want to show off is a meter that I saw when I was a kid. I wanted one. Um, and I still think they're kind of cool looking. <laughs> and that's, that's this here. Uh, and it's got a very strange meter. First of all, it's it's not like a normal meter where it just does this. It 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 does this. It's a really strange, and it fits in the corner. So I don't know if it utilizes the space better, but it's certainly odd. And and and, and I've always liked them. Um, I've seen a whole bunch of beat up ones, but I've, I found a very nice example. This one here, and uh, this one is all pretty nice in the box. So let's uh, back up here a bit. Uh, even has the original original manual uh, operating instructions here. Let's see. Uh, yeah, very cool. Uh, Midland. So Midland is a company that used to, was I think the first US company to build CB radios. Um, this is a model 23-101 volt ohm meter or VOM. People used to call them VOMs. Um, and uh, even comes with a schematic. How about that? And the original owner says that it needed an AA 1.5 volt battery Duracell. Okay, fine. Must be Duracell. <laughs> anyway, uh, here's the actual schematic of it. It's very, very cool. We'll take a look at we'll take a look on the inside a little bit later. But uh, but uh, yeah, here's the box. So pretty cool. Quality worldwide products. Now, interestingly, this was made in Japan. Um, and uh, I don't know who built, I don't know if Sanwa built these or who built these for Midland. Um, if somebody knows, let me know. I, I'd be curious to know if this is Sanwa or not. Um, but uh, yeah, it's got, uh, it's got a roundabout switch on it. It goes all the way around. It's got so let's look at the let's look at the uh, ranges here. Uh, it's got uh, 10 volt AC, 50 volt AC, 250, and 1,000 volt AC. Uh, R times 1K and R times 10. Uh, DC volts, 502.5K. So that's, it has an extra connector over here for the 2.5K. I don't know if I'm want, wanting to put 2.5K into this thing, but I guess. Uh, 125, 25, and 5. Those are good ranges. And then uh, microamps. It's got 50 microamps. It's probably a 50 microamp uh, meter movement. So 50 microamps or 250 milliamps. Uh, so it has a shunt in it. Um, so uh, there's different types of jacks on uh, different instruments. And everybody seemed to have their own... Um, Sometimes they were funny. The, these are very, very odd. You have to have a very special, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a tiny banana jack that fits these. Uh, these are the old, uh, I, don't know if they, well, I don't know what these were called. They're just pins and you can just uh, push them in and uh, away you go. So they're about three quarters of an inch long or something like that. And yeah. Pretty nice. Let's see. I put a battery in it so we can uh, see if the homage works. Let's see here. Yes, indeed. I zoomed in a little bit too far here. I'll just I'll zoom up so you can see the meter itself. So now we can watch the watch the meter do its thing. Now, if you've never used one of these old meters, you have to know um, a little bit about it. This screw here is to adjust this zero, okay? But the ohm range also needed adjustment. When you shorted it out, it needs to go there. And it has this little wheel here, and you turn this little wheel, and it's a, it's a potentiometer, and you need to turn it until you're calibrated on that side. So that calibrates the zero, and then that calibrates the infinity, and then you're good to go in between. Uh, let's see here. Let's look at a resistor. 
Um, this is a 90 ohm resistor and uh, you're going to be reading this bottom curve scale on this side and uh, let's see here ohmage let's see this is the times 10 yeah we will be uh, on that bottom one and goes up to about 90 a little bit less maybe um, and here's a 10k if I put it on the 10k you can see that it barely moves okay barely moves so we need to change ranges and we'll go here to 10k and uh, we're going to be reading now on the outer scale, okay, and, or the bottom scale, I should say. And I get my, ah, I get my meter working here. Oh, I'm on the wrong one. Here we go. And there we go. Ten, perfect. So it measures very well. Um, yeah, let's get some voltages here. Uh, let's. Some volts on the uh, see so here we'll go to we'll go to the 25 volt scale and this is I'm uh, putting 5.7 so now you need to use the uh, 25 uh, you need to use the bottom scale but read off the middle of the three it's kind of complicated but it's, but it's right there at about five so let's go down and volts here here's 4.3 volts and then we can go up a scale here and about four point whatever okay so you know they're good to 10 percent 20 percent something like that back in the day that was fine 20, 10 20 percent yeah you were you were good to go <laughs> um but yeah I've, i like i said i've always liked these meters uh in, in actuality, they're a pain in the butt to use. They're really hard to read. Um, you kind of want to do this, <laughs> you know? Uh, and then the numbers are upside down. Uh, if you turn it sort of like this, the numbers are facing the wrong direction. Uh, they're just not right. Uh, they're very, very difficult to use, but I really like them still. Uh, you're better off reading off of numbers like this, easier to read. But I do, I do like it. Um, but I say we open it up, take a look inside. Yeah, see what the goodness is. All right, let's open it up. Well, that's easy. One screw right in the middle. <laughs> I like that. All instruments should should be constructed this way. <laughs> look at that. Okay, let's uh, let's zoom down. See what we can see. All right. Well, we have a uh, rotary switch here. I have to admit, I already cleaned the contacts on this thing before I shot this video. Um, and uh, yeah, so we have a roundabout here with some cool old wire round, wire wound precision resistors to make. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, here's battery. The battery was um, the battery was definitely corroded uh, when I got it. There was no battery in it, but the con this contact was corroded when I got it. And uh oh, that wire came off. There's, it's really hard. This this wire I just can't get solder to stick to it. It's kind of weird. Um, and I need to I need to solder that back right there. Um, the cool thing so. The <laughs> So here's the meter sitting in the corner. So that's that that's kind of fun. All right. But the coolest thing besides these black resistors here um, is the red thing down there. Let's uh, let's change lenses because you've got to see that thing. All right. So I was very confused when I first saw this thing. Um, it didn't make any sense to me. Um, it. I thought maybe it was a uh, a little inductor, um, and maybe it had an adjustment on the end there. That little thing sticking out. Uh, it definitely has a uh, definitely definitely has a screwdriver slot in it to uh, 
Is that to adjust things? Uh, yeah. And <laughs> if you want to pause the video now and guess what that thing is, uh, go ahead. All right. Okay, if you want to have a clue, uh, the clue is it has something to do with measuring AC. Oh, you can pause the video again. All right. Uh, well, meters can measure DC things, but they can't measure AC things. So you need diodes. You need two diodes to do an AC measurement. And uh, <laughs> guess what that little red thing is? Yeah, that's right, that thing's two diodes. It's a selenium rectifier. <laughs> it's the smallest selenium rectifier I've ever seen. Can I bend that wire out of the way there? Yeah, there we go. All right, there's a better view of it. Yeah, that little selenium rectifier. So selenium itself is not a um, semiconductor, but a selenium rectifier has cad sulfide in it, or cad cadmium selenide has cadmium selenide in it, which is a, uh, a four valence a semiconductor. And so it is a cadmium selenide selenium PN junction. Yeah, it's a weird, <laughs> it's a weird thing. And normally these are like big pagoda type things, but this one's just this tiny little thing painted red. Very cute. So some people may have been asking, what is that capacitor in there? There's that big capacitor. Uh, you didn't talk about that. Well, there's this one connection here uh, called output and that uh, capacitor connects to output. And we can see it here in the, uh, in the diagram. So it's this capacitor right here. And it allows you to monitor, well, it's kind of a funny thing. Let's read about it. Uh, Let's read about it. Okay. Output measurements. Audio output measurements can be made on circuits where the DC component is present, as in an output transformer circuit, okay? And so the instrument contains a blocking capacitor in series with the output jack. So it is not an output. Oops. It is not an output, it is an input for an output. <laughs> so if you're measuring an audio amplifier output, it may have a DC on it, but you just want to measure its AC. And uh, so you can put it through a blocking capacitor. So the output is a blocking capacitor and they should have labeled it maybe AC input or some other block in any what's called an output. Insert the test lead into the output jack and the minus common. Uh, so instead of putting the uh, you use the out, use, you use the common as the black wire, and then usually the red wire goes over here. If you're measuring high voltage, the red wire goes there. Or if you want a DC blocking capacitor, the, uh, the red wire goes there. So that's what output is. All right, there you go. A uh, blast from the past, from my childhood. Uh, now I own one, a Midland Model 23-101. Probably sold at Radio Shack. Thank you.